Right, I'll get started. Uh, Drew, I've, I've really enjoyed um, the movie. I just wanted to begin really by asking about the, the genesis of the project and how you came to decide that this subject would, uh, the, on the communication between Humpback Wales would be your, your, next, your next thing. Yeah, I, I, it started with falling in love with the science. I started obsessing over everything I could get my hands on about whale cognition, culture, communication. And about a year into that, I just I just felt that the picture it painted was more profound than any science fiction I'd ever read or seen. And it occurred to me that if I'm this affected by reading the work, surely the people who go out to see and do the work themselves and witness it and experience it, um, it must be profound for them in a way I can't even imagine. So I started going, I started cold calling and then going to whale conferences to meet uh, the scientists that I became a fanboy of. And they started inviting me out on boats to see what it's like for myself. And that was the beginning of the process. And how did you come to find Michelle and Ellen? Because they're brilliant kind of entry points, aren't they, for the, for the viewer in this? They're so, they managed to do it. It's one thing being informative and educational is the kind of subjects, but to do it and be kind of charismatic on screen and to be, is, is a whole different matter. They've got all of that and, and then some. Yeah, I appreciate it. Yeah, I, I mean, I met Michelle through a mutual friend who's a radio journalist who tried to do a story about Michelle and then things fell apart and was so sad about it. So I think vicariously she said, Drew, you should meet Michelle and maybe you can, um, maybe you guys can connect. And we talked for about a year, but not not really courting her to be part of a film, just to help me develop and wrap my head around what, what everyone is doing and how it works. Um, and then I figured out what Michelle's doing. I was like, oh my God, can I come out with you and see what that looks like? And she said, yes. Um, and I met Ellen about a year later um, and it was a similar thing. I said, can I come out to Scotland and meet you and sort of see what your work, just talk to you and, and meet you. So, you know, first and foremost with this process, it's like, do we get along? Do we like each other? Um, and we became friends first because it's so important. The amount of trust and vulnerability that's required on participating in a film like this, um, you have to become friends and, and, and they are my friends. Uh, and then secondly, it was, um, you know, I needed scientists who uh, spend lots of time out at sea, away from home. Oh, that experience was important. I wanted to represent that. And also we're asking profound big questions. And to me, they're both brilliant and geniuses and their questions couldn't be more profound. So they kind of checked off everything. And honestly, most I just really like hanging out with them. I mean, it's an incredibly like creative and visually stimulating experience watching this movie. And while it is accessible, it doesn't feel like it's pandering to a mainstream audience at all. Were you, were you quite pleased to be allowed to do things your way? Because it does feel like a, a film that has very much has a director's voice in it, if that makes any sense. <laughs> I really, really appreciate you saying that. Yeah, I mean, I, the only, when we were developing the film and talking about it and pitching it to like, you know, proposals for grants, et cetera, I didn't, we didn't have any documentaries to point to in terms of examples of like what we wanted to do. Our main, ex, our main um, inspirations were science fiction films because science fiction is the only genre that gives us permission to think of another intelligence as an equal or an other. Um, and in my opinion, the science is, is describing that it takes enormous humility to not just put everything, you know, in this hierarchy of like lesser than greater than, and really what we're doing is just trying to figure out if they're better at being human beings than, than us or less, you know, so to think about something outside of ourselves as also having communicate complex communication, complex brains, complex social structures, um, means that the, the things that we have used to define what it is to be a human are actually uh, things that we're very new to and has defined a lot of other species before us. It, it's what connects us to other things, not what makes us unique. Uh, so yeah, sorry, I think I took a little bit of a tangent on that. <laughs> no, because I was wondering too, because I was reading, a, um, my wife has a National Geographic <laughs> um, thing where she gets every month a, a subscription. And I, there was an article in it recently about uh, this month's about whales having kind of different cultures. Do you think animals are capable of having different cultures? Because I know it sounds like something that should be so obvious, but when I sort of read that, I was like, oh yeah. <laughs> I know it's it's to me the idea if you put the word culture next to something that's not the word human it's actually quite subversive for, for most of us it's new and it's exciting to me it's like well wait a minute other thing other other you know intelligent creatures have culture what does that look like and suddenly it expands how you think about 
things that we're, we only look to ourselves for. I mean, that's kind of the bigger point of this film is to, I think we're all, you know, ultimately we're trying to figure out like what, what makes us us? What, what is kind of our role in all this and stuff where we're hyper aware and hyper conscious of all these things. And really, I don't think we're going to get very far if all we do is think about ourselves and talk to ourselves about it. We have a lot of neighbors who've uh, had large brains for a lot longer than we have. And listening to them, I think, is key to understanding what the hell we're doing here on this planet. When I was a kid, I went to the Natural History Museum and they had a huge big whale. And it was one of those things that everyone would stand and marvel at how big whales can get. And I've always been slightly afraid of whales in, in a sense I think I'd be quite intimidated being out in the ocean just because just because they're so vast and so massive when they go under the boats and stuff that's always the prospects right to me did you ever feel anxious at all I mean they are such a generally sort of very peaceful uh, creatures and there's no need to be all kind of worried but was there any moments when making this where you did feel a little bit kind of nervous about being so, so up close to such a huge big species I never I never did but when I one, a really important quality as a documentary filmmaker is that you never panic. You're never, you're very calm and you're witnessing things no matter what's happening. You're just there to witness. And so I kind of suspend a lot of those emotions when I'm, when I'm, when I'm filming. Uh, but looking back on things, it's certainly very clear that, um, you know, it's, it's, preca it's a precarious to say the least, but um, I was luckily blissfully ignorant uh, trying to just do the experience justice for the film. Um, my, my final question um I was just wondering over over the course of making this did you really feel man's impact on the oceans and did you feel it's a kind of sub story to this a responsibility to acknowledge that what we're doing to 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 do these species out there in the world yeah i think i mean i think i think the scientists would say like the larger point the really urgent point of this work is to show that um that why these sounds are incredibly important, you know, like this one sound that Dr. Fournay is studying, it is, she thinks the cornerstone to how they maintain lifelong relationships, animals that are hyper intelligent, hyper social and live to 100 years. Um, so if you know that these sounds are very important, and then you know that all of our propellers and motors in the water that are zipping around having a lot of fun um, are deafening and slowing the conversations and reducing their ability to actually connect with each other in an acoustic world, then yeah, I, I did feel it. We'd throw the hydrophone in the water and all you hear are, are, are engines from you know giant ferry boats that are 20 kilometers away, but they're deafening even to our hydrophones. So imagine the whales. Um, there is a takeaway, which is, listen, we have the technology to do better. It's just a matter of choosing to do so. So hopefully, you know, you see this and you see the work and it allows people to deeply understand it and care and maybe make different decisions. Brilliant. On that note, thank you so much for your time today, Drew. It's been a real pleasure speaking to you. Best of luck with the, with the release of the film as well. Thank you, Stefan. Thank sure. you very much for making the time. I appreciate it. Ladies and gentlemen, you're watching Hey You Guys. Hey You Guys, huh? Hey you guys, Is that yeah. from the Goonies? It is indeed, yeah. Nice. Hey!